the hope of the common man. It could also be the rope that hangs the common man. So what, what, how man. do we fix this? This is a major problem. When executive has a problem, it should run to the judiciary. When the legislature has a problem, it should run to the judiciary. When the people, the citizens have a problem, they run to the judiciary. But when you, as a senior lawyer, a professor, and a human rights lawyer, speaks like this, it gives some of us some worry. I'm not the only person who has spoken like this. Professor Wakweze, who is the oldest and most senior lawyer in Nigeria today, has written this in a book published in 2009. And he said things I cannot even say on, t on national TV, right? It's in a book. I can give you the title and, and, and I give you the page, page 147 of this was actually in a lecture he delivered at the Nigerian Institute of Advanced Legal Studies, uh, for which there were sanctions levied against the leadership of the Institute of Advanced Legal Studies at the time because of the frankness of, how, of his assessment of what was going on with the judiciary. And things have cratered since then. And you see, when all of this kind, when this kind of trust deficit exists, and the Chief Justice presides, first as the chairperson of the Federal Judicial Service Commission, and then as the chairperson of the NJC, to appoint his son as a judge of the Federal High Court, you've got a problem. How do we... The Chief Justice should not be appointing his son a judge of the Federal High Court, no matter how great the son is. What about that? What about saying, okay, you know what? This young man applied, and so I recuse myself, and I will never be involved in this, and I set an example. But no. So you have two sons of Chief Justice Kutigi who are judges of the of, of who are judges. No, and you have no, all these children of all of these judges. No, there is nothing you have to say about that. If they were judges, let me finish. 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 There is nothing hereditary about judging. And judging is not a is not a sexually transmitted condition so that husbands will be inseminating their wives with the capacity to be judges and uh, you know men will be inseminating their mistresses with the capacity to be judges and fathers will be producing sons and daughters who are judges. Uh, Justice Bukatua's daughter, Justice Altan's daughter, they all delays. No, it is not like that. And we've got to say enough is enough. As a country, this is unacceptable. The buying of the judiciary and the compromising of the judiciary in this manner is why these kinds of allegations are being traded. It's got to stop. Judges should stop doing insider trading with judicial appointments. What about that? The members of the NJC should stop doing insider trading with judicial appointments. What about that? Until people have the sense that judges are actually competent, credible, and appointed, not because their fathers, their mothers, their husbands, their mis their, their uh, boyfriends and girlfriends are on the bench. We are good. This problem is going to deeper. Well, I, I'm imagining you know, that we don't trust our judiciary. We don't trust them. But you know, God still remains God. The foundation of God stands forever. The voice of the people is the voice of God, and the heart of the king is controlled by God. Yeah, judiciary. We, we are watching. All eyes are watching. The world are watching. You know. Yeah, but we still believe that uh, it's God that have the final say and everything going to turn for our good. Looking at the way the things are really moving, the way, the way things are going, you know, there is a kind of, you know, you know, something that is playing behind the scene. You can hear how this man is just lamenting, saying a lot of things, you know, because I don't see any reason why George... I mean, want to resign, then he want to replace his son, you know, to take, you know, his position. Why not allow things to continue to move the way? We hear so many things, and we hear about anarchy and the chaos and whatever, you know. But let's still continue moving. The end is what matters. And at the end of the day, you know, I believe that everything going to end in praise. Guys, let me leave it here. Let me know what you think in the comment section. For me, I don't trust the judiciary, but I know that God is watching. You guys are supposed to do the right thing. Let me see if they will cancel this 25%. You know, like we are still watching if the constitution still remains the way it is. Okay, guys, drop your comment and let's keep rolling. One love. Never you lose hope. When there is life, there is hope. You're going to get it right. Keep pushing. One love, guys. Stay tuned and watch the video. I love you. A bag of a one kilogram of semovita.
is 800 naira now. It used to be a lot less than that. A module of Gary is 700 naira. A bottle of groundnut oil is 1,200 naira. A bottle of palm oil is 1,100. A plate of tomato is 400 naira. In fact, I don't want to say how much a, a ball of tomato is in the market now. You'll be shocked. That plate of tomato is about maybe six or seven pieces in it. So divided by 400, it tells you that you get a, a ball of tomato about 100 naira. That's how much it sells. Now, a plate of pepper is 200 naira. And a bag of pure water, such a, such a water that you will get, uh, is now 250 naira. And that is what... Uh, these people who are in the lower Kedah, uh, which uh, the, the likes of the World Bank had captured to say, they spend less than a dollar today. And now the rate of the dollar is about 800 and uh, something, uh, I mean, uh, 80, 80 naira or thereabout to the, the, the naira. So my question is, I'd like to ask you, uh, although difficult to answer, but let us know. This palliative, this 8,000 Naira, good or bad idea? Because we need to know, because this money is not for government. This money is supposed to be for the people of Nigeria, and the people of Nigeria need to know whether it's a good or a bad idea. From your point of view, as a professional, good or bad? Us out. You rehabilitate the farmers, and then the farming community can now begin to put food out to the market. That would, of course, depress the high cost of uh, food in the market. But where you now decide that that is not going to be your priority, your priority is going to distribute money, not just to the poor of the poorest, but also to National Assembly, to the judiciary. So how on earth can anybody say that is good? That doesn't make sense. And for me, for the National Assembly itself, to spend only a few hours and approve this, Mr. Yesu talked of uh, engaging stakeholders. This is what the National Assembly should have spent days or weeks Think engaging about it. national, I mean, engaging stakeholders to ensure that the right policy is put out there. But the haste with which it was approved, look, just tells you that either it's out of competence, out of no, uh, lack of knowledge of the situation in this country, or that our leaders simply don't care once they've been elected and they are, they've been taken care of because they are going to get about 70 billion. And you can imagine advertising 70 billion at this particular time when people are suffering, as he has analyzed, to begin to buy vehicles. In this country, with the situation people are going through, you just gave us the prices of, uh, of food stuff. You've not even factored in the cost of medicine. Go to now an average pharmacy in this country and see how much medications people are now finding it difficult to buy medicine in this country. So how can it be good? For me, I thought this government was very well prepared from what has been said, and that when they come in, they will come in with a clearly defined roadmap for us to get out of the economic situation we are. But this Peace Mills announcement that creates so much uncertainty. It, it's not going to help us. Suffering. Or that Tinubu, do something. Do something. I want you guys to know that we all are visitors. One day we're going to go. And if we go, we go with nothing. Everything is vanity upon vanity. You see, I don't see any reason why the rich are getting richer, why the poor are getting poorer. We are talking about uh, senators. Judiciary, people who are comfortable. You know, I don't really know why we don't watch our back when we are doing things and know that in life, everything, there is a repercussion. Because, Ogatinibu, you see, I don't really see any reason why you said, I mean, you're going to increase the salary of the judiciary, the lawmaker, and whatever. Why we have people who don't even have who they slept under the bridge. Some people find it difficult to feed. We have many dropouts. We have graduates who don't even have work. 
a lot of crime in Nigeria is because of uh, some of this. It's not intentionally. Check for instance, after graduating, maybe some sold land. Some did a lot of things, thinking that, oh, yes, after much, much, at least my son or my daughter will have a nice job. Then they will continue from where I stopped. And at the end of the day, you came back, watch your parents suffering. It's, it's just the grace of God that you can resist some certain things. That's why you see people saying, oh, I better die. Fine. Your wife, you know, made a speech and said how oh, God has blessed the family, everybody, we are rich. Fine. There is a post, you know, the video that went viral, how you bought your kids' house in abroad, that comfortable living a good life. But I want you to know that the legacy you left behind will always fight for you. Have you ever think and said, let me just, I mean, create a legacy that can never be forgotten. Let me try to help the poor. This morning, of course, one day, I'm, I will go one day. You are lucky. Look at your age. You are a father. But you should do like a father, Ogatinebo. You are a father. Do something that each time we remember, we like say, okay, fine. This is a legacy that you left behind that will always work for you. Good Lord Jonathan look at himself. He said, no, I better let go. If the blood of Nigeria will just be true, let me let go. Buhari came and said, I mean, it's, uh, his intention of coming is to develop his people. Because once I'm concerned, once, once he's there, his intention is just to develop himself and his people. He was not there. It was it's for self-interest, not for Nigeria. Now you are there, Ogatinebo. Do something, sir. People are suffering. Tomatoes, costly. Little, little food. Why is it that you people are doing things? The poor are getting poorer. Whatever decision you guys are taking is affecting the poor. I mean, you should take a decision that will affect the rich, not the poor. And you are expecting that there won't be crime in Nigeria. Is that what you are expecting? Oh God, do something. People are suffering. People are suffering. You remove, yes. People cannot really boss his pact. First subsidy is removed. But people are suffering. There was a need. Now you've talked about palliative. People are saying, use it to establish something. So that people will get a job. Okay, guys, let me leave it here. And let me know your comments in the comment section. And let's keep rolling. One love. And one day we're going to get our mandate. God is doing something. Everything going to turn around for good. Okay, guys, drop your comment and let's rule. So watching. See you in the next one. Don't forget to press the bell notification so that each time I post a video, you'll be notified. Give the video a thumbs up and let me know your beautiful comment in the comment section. If you are new in my channel, highly welcome. All my new, my old subscribers, I appreciate all of you. I embrace you once again. I love you. I love you. I love you. Thanks for being part of my family. May God bless you. Share the video. Let it go viral. Let me know your comment in the beautiful comment. Bye-bye. I love you. Bye. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.